when you first started doing that um, rock art, what got you interested in that? When I was an artist, in Holland, I used to go to a department store to snoop around for any books of him. Mm. It was the first time that I stumbled into a German book done by Professor Fordanius yeah. on the Robert Robbins of Africa, which he had collected himself, with a whole star of artists, yeah. specially selected for the purpose. And they made copies of these rock drawings, African rock drawings in mm. Sahara, and Bushman drawings as well. Mm. And that was the first clue that I had about rock drawings. When I came to New Zealand, one day I came across a reference of there being rock drawings in New Zealand, so automatically, of course, I was intensely curious. And I went to the localities that were known, visited those. And uh, as I went into other gullies, I spread my search wider and wider and around mm -hmm. that thing. I found some joints that were not listed, that mm -hmm. were not known. Mm -hmm. So I had the first indication that there had not been any full survey had ever been made, apart from the fact that yeah. people had bumped into that chance. Mm. So I subconsciously I realized here was scope. Mm. <coughs> and when I mentioned the rock drawings to Roger Duff at the Kempton Museum, he said, Oh, they have nothing much to do with the classical Maori art, they're only doodles and scribbles done by Maoris traveling for uh, on the Greenstone route or moving from one place to another. And I said, well, I don't think that that is so, so I showed him this book that I had, mm. you see. And when he found somebody who, to translate it for him, <coughs> he said, well, you know, of course, there might be something in it. <laughs> And uh, we might be uh, interested in getting your grant to do these rock drawings for us mm. that we have on the list. Yes. When you mentioned on the list, I said, you better keep the cap shut of what you know mm. and don't let out any more that <laughs> leave him to all the talking and the blabbing. Yeah. And uh, the list was drawn up. And he got me the ground for it, and when I protested that it was unrealistic and inadequate, he said, well, if you pay an artist too much, he doesn't do your bidding. Ah. <coughs> and what was a really tiny amount? About the other you had to sort of live in the show. He would hardly pay for the boards, the paints. Well, who paid for your film, for your photographs? Did you have to pay for that yourself? Well, he made the stipulation that any photographs that I took would automatically belong to the museum and Roger Duff, of course. Ah, yes, yeah. That was in the contract. He made mm. me sign a contract to that effect. Even though he wasn't paying you enough? I was not allowed to retain notes, sketches, photographs, or copies for myself. And I said to him, you know, that I'm interested in the subject myself. Why shouldn't I retain some that interest me. Yeah, exactly. mm. And he said, well, I want to write a book on it. Ah. As blunt as that. Yeah. Mm. In other words, I was doing the leg work and he was doing the yeah, business. Mm. Yeah. <coughs> and what sort of supervision <coughs> did he do over this? <coughs> he regularly came over to inspect the progress. And, and the first work that I did I did very conscientiously, up to the standards of Trobanes. Mm. But I realized that I would not eat at all if I continued on that level. Were you getting paid by the drawing, by the copy you were making? Or I was right. paid by the copies that I brought in. So the more you did... At a fixed price. Yeah. The more I did, the more I got paid. 
So the only thing I could do was that is go down and stand in the door. Making, making copies, and then it's what you call the journal called stylization, <laughs> filling it in instead of dot for dot. Yeah. Mm. And what state were the drawings in when you saw them? Were they very faint and? Well, physical? some of them were clear, and some of them were very faint. And I slowly learned that if you throw water over it, temporarily they will come up very clear. Yeah but only for as long as it is wet. Yeah. So, uh, what I did was photograph the things while they were still in the wet state. Mm. And later on, I tried the method of stipple by stipple retouching. On the rock. Yeah, but I found that even that effort to make the most ideal possible restoration was too time consuming. Mm. So I abandoned that and I just only reverted to uh, recording whatever could be seen. Had so the quality went further down all the time. <laughs> Has any of the drawings been retouched or gone over the corner? Yes, yes I, I have done it myself too. Mm. But, but you see, see, I had this issue to weigh up should I or should I. Mm. And, and when I, I saw the cows and she she rubbed rub it against these drawings, drawings and nobody, nobody cared, cared, cared a hoot then the process, the process of trying to, try to retain, retain what is still there, is still there there's still a positive there's still a positive the loss against the nobody, loss without nobody nor the pious nor the pious the pious souls souls were concerned they couldn't care less they have let it neglect they, uh, but they became very pious mm. when I did this <laughs> restoration job you see, they had a club to beat me with. These same people were not concerned about the, the signatures and the uh, graffiti yeah. that were down there. That didn't alarm them at all. The depositive act on my behalf, with the utmost care, they found that they could make a song and dance them. But how can you interpret someone else's culture? That must have been a difficulty that you had to Well, that is a stupid thing to do. I mean, you try to retrieve what is still there unmistakably and if it doesn't make something that you can recognize you leave it alone that's stop but i wasn't into rock drawings from your angle you see because i wanted to learn artistically and i found most of it a bloody bore except that for those very exceptional ones those gave me artistically something it was purely from that I could get from it as an artist, but not historically. That angle has never interested me very much. Because I like to stick to what an artist can probe for, no more. Mm. All I had heard was from South Island Pakehas, their standard opinions about Maori, see? Mm. And you know I don't have to tell you what that is, see? Mm. Mm. An awkward question for you. Yes, true. I worked on some of the Benmore. Uh, rock rock paintings before they um, before they drowned the place. Yeah. And on some of those, there was a crayon which had been used to enhance the the drawings. Yes. The common sort of scuttle that said that the crayon came from you. Sometimes it was correct. <coughs> Sometimes it was correct. But not all. So, so how did you use the crayon? It was those marking crayons, mm. all the marking crayons. Mm. But where I have used them, the actual design was invisible. Mm. The only time that they could be made visible was too wet though. Mm. You could not photograph them, not a hope. Mm. Quite really. I understand that you See, But the only time when I was absolutely beyond any mistake is when they were wet. And I thought, well, make a document of it. Because they're doing it anyway. That's what I understand. Was that, you see, um, your my attitude was that I'm very conscious of the fact that you must not interfere with historical things. Mm. And I agree with that completely. So I had to consider very carefully whether I was going to sin or not. <laughs>
And I did that very carefully with, the, with uh, tapping my conscience on that issue. But it was made very easy for me, and that is, I lived in many of those shelters, and cow and sheep came into them, rubbing themselves in ecstasy. And Roger Duff said to me, in rather a smug sort of a fashion, well, if you pay an artist too much, he doesn't do your bidding. <coughs> Slam. <Yeah. coughs> well, from that moment on, I knew that he was a bastard for the first rate. For the first Just a reason exploiter. <coughs> <coughs> and then he said, the other provision about it is that you sign a contract with us, us, <laughs> of course, the royalty, uh, that uh, you must part from every drawing, every note, every negative, every photograph you take, and every note that you make in the field. I said, well, Roger, I'm oh, personally well. interested in these rock drawings. Why can't I retain some notes or photographs of myself? Oh, well. He said, for the simple reason that I want to do the book. And under those conditions, I started doing it. I still was conscientious. The first ones I copied, that was that dot for dot thing that you would expect from the standards of Dr. Frobenius. But since I was paid on delivery of the boards by the number of boards for these things, I couldn't eat. I had to do portraits of farmers' kids and do paintings of farms to eat. Well, when you're divided between two jobs like that, you know, your work suffers. So I went on to copy drawings, what you call conventionalizing them, by making solid fillings instead of yeah, the dot. Yeah, going around the outline. And that is why I ultimately find, found the correct level where I could still have some bread and butter without jam. <laughs> that Roger Duff had determined roughly what I could do and what I couldn't do was already predetermined. And in spite of my protest, you know what his answer was. And that is the history of uh, an undertaking. Apart from all the difficulties that came up, how to get as accurate a rendition in the documentation of it and the copying of it. You see, all of it has a bearing on the decisions and the choices I have to make. If the beginnings are shabby, I mean, you sink along that level. You hold hands with an idiot and you become an idiot yourself. <laughs> so how, how would you characterize your own the final product to you produced. Gizmo. Yes, and And how long would it have taken to do all this work? It must have taken years. It did. All in all it took about four years. Four years? Yes. Five actually because I went on afterwards by working as a laborer here and there to go on my own searching for more. Mm. <coughs> when I came, when I had fulfilled the contract of copying all those ones that were listed by the mm. museums, I handed over the lot. And I said to Roger Duff, well, I signed a contract. I want from you a piece of paper that declares that I have fulfilled my contract to yeah. the full. Oh, sure, certainly, I'll give you that. So he gave me that mm. signed declaration that he had uh, my obligations to the left. Mm. <coughs> and he said, and Theo, what are you going to do now? I said, oh, I'm going to carry on. He said, sure, you've got the lot. He said, oh, there's ten times more in the field. Mm. And then he said to me, oh, well, of course, I could extend the ground. I said, look here, I won't work for a bastard like you forever, any. Mm. Never. Um, even if you pay me ten times as much. You're a nasty prick. You see, and that was the end of the relationship <laughs> between Roger <laughs> Duff and me. Um, and from then on, he started to make black money as much as he could. What did he say? You hadn't done the copies properly? Oh, that I had uh, defiled the drug drawings and things like that. 
No, that I have to damage to any kind of mean gossip. Mm. That he was capable of. And did you find most of the major drawings, or do you think they've been discovered before? No, I found quite a lot more. Mm. But I refused to let on where they were. Mm. If the nation wants the full knowledge, they can employ somebody else to go through the same mm. horrors as I have gone through. Mm. But they certainly were not going to get it free from me. No. After this insult, I mean, all I could present is my backside, like a baboon. Mm. <coughs> and did you push on further south after you finished with that? Well, I continued by then, by working as a laborer here, there and everywhere to have the funds to do it in between, you know, uh, working six months and three months off mm. and things like that. And that's how I did the rest. And what about in the North but, Island? Uh, I started on the North Island, but by the time I got to Kafia, which was the most promising area, my health had gone already that badly. Mm. I could not uh, stand up to the rigors of that kind of work. What is your conscience feeling about doing that retouching? It's just what I told you. <coughs> you see, I, there was a history that I could float on. That was the history of Dr. Elmore in America. He, 1916, <coughs> um, he saw what was happening to these rock drawings. He said, Jesus Christ, you better take them out because the cattle is rubbing against them even at that time already. <coughs> Apart from the fact of that uh, already names were being added to these things, preserve it by cutting them out and put them into the museums. But that created enormous outrage. Nobody cared to hang until Dr. Elmore arrived, and that made a wonderful cause for all sorts of bitching and people getting themselves into the paper criticizing it. Well, know? then the rest of the museum. So I was very conscious the about the fact of poor Dr. Elmore being damned for doing it or damned for not doing it. Uh, that's usually the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I've always been very conscious of the factor of you shouldn't. But it's only desperation. In hindsight, of course, the crayon was would have been better as red chalk because the crayon won't come off the uh, off the carvings at all. You can't get it off without without raising the whole thing. It's, it's almost impossible to lift it off the uh, off the wall. The chemical solution should be able to, to remove it. So far, they haven't found one. No, on the road. so far we sense. haven't found mm. anything to remove. <coughs> Wax is peculiarly resistant to most things except heat. Is it? Yeah. Today, nuisance. But what was there, was there. Mm. No, nothing has been added. Or Why did you do it? Learning to understand other art languages, other manifestations of art. Providing the music, live musical. How are you? You're good. Very well. Nice to see very you. well. Hi. It's only me. Yeah. Matt, don't be that bad. Janine Randerson, you've got a beautiful hand. In fact, I can see your whole future on. <laughs> you can have my bracelet. Yeah. There's only a few packages on these things. Mind if it's a little bit cold? Yeah. Just a if I carefully pump the snark, I put some sugar on it. Oh, you put some sugar in? Yeah. Oh, it's too late. It's got to have milk. Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm. If, if I carefully record a couple of these patterns, I only have the whole cloak. Yeah. I very quickly discovered I didn't have the whole cloak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because absolutely subtly, I'm changing the pattern. That's right. Putting it around the other way. Otherwise, it would be as there as a doormat. That's right. The aesthetic sense was always there to create variations on the feet. The creative aspect was always the work. <laughs> 